Hey everyone, I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm trying out for the VGC commentator position that uh, Pokemon is holding auditions for. Um, you're about to see a video in which I give it my all and um, all the gusto that I have. And um, I'm just very excited about the opportunity just to try out uh, something I wanted to do since I saw um, GameSpot sponsor him and do it in 2012. I've been doing commentary over Pokemon things for longer than that. Um, I've had this YouTube channel for a very long time, been doing over the Pokemon video game for a very long time, playing competitive for a very long time. Um, I want to say at least since uh, maybe 2010, 2011. It's been a long time. So um, basically, I hope you guys enjoy. Um, I want to thank Aaron Zhang for letting me use the video. I asked his permission uh, because I figured who better to get a video from than someone who is just so incredibly competitive and successful than Aaron Zhang. Um, so thank you very much, Aaron. And I go. I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I hope that uh, Pokemon picks me. Uh, show your support, leave a like and a comment, and share the video around with your friends and tell them to do the same and just so they know that you want me to be there um, giving my um, point of view and my own personal wacky spin on things so thank you guys enjoy the video okay so I haven't watched this video so it's gonna be ads if it were live the only information I have is that uh, Aaron Zhang is using an Aerodactyl, Asmorel, Manetric, Salamence, Rotom, Heat Form, and Azure Slash now if I'm Aaron Zhang I know that um, his Mega is Manetric I think uh, he's obviously going to pick that. I think Azumarill is going to be great in this matchup. Um, it can handle Rotom Heat and Salamence and really hit Kangaskhan hard. Um, I think uh, a Scarf Salamence on Aaron's side is also uh, going to be great. And Rotom H will be good too. Um, because he's, Paul has a really bulky Amoongus and has an Aegislash of his own. I think that Paul will probably bring in that Aegislash. I think we might see another Mence. Uh, he'll bring in his Kangaskhan. And probably that Asmurl because it is just too good with Belly Drum and Citrus Berry. Um, that's the most popular set. And if you see why, it maxes out his attack. And then Citrus Berry activates right away and gains a bunch of its uh, health back. Now we see both Salamence leading off, and both Salamence have Intimidate, so everything on the field is going to start at minus one attack. Now, um, right here, I think Aaron is just going to go for a Will-O-Wisp. It's a pretty safe play. Um, I would just hit that Aegislash, get residual damage on it. Um, and the Salamence is facing each other. It's just too early to uh, kind of go just with a speed tie and hope you win it. So I, I think that at least someone's going to switch out. Both these Salamences are probably Scarf. That's the most popular um, item on Salamence right now. And that that Aegislash, there's not much he can do right now. Maybe he'll switch out. But we'll see Aaron switch out his Salamence. He's going to go into Asmoral, which is a great switch in because Fairy is immune to dragon and Paul's gonna switch out his Salamence as well like I said it's just too early to risk your Salamence and he goes also into an Asmorel so great switch by both players um, Paul is gonna go into Kangaskhan and that's really risky be oh and oh Aaron misses the Will-O-Wisp that's an 85% accurate move and sometimes that 15% where you miss feels like 50% Jeez, that's painful because that Will-O-Wisp would have been huge to get off on either one of Paula's Pokemon. He was tagging the Azumarill, um, so that would have been great if uh, he would have hit that. But that's the name of the game. Sometimes you miss. So I, I think that, uh, well, Rotom's going to switch out here. I think that's a good play because it was in danger of getting faked out by Mega Kangaskhan when he Mega Evolves. Salamence comes in with the Intimidate, gets both sides at minus one. Uh, great play. <laughs> Just you Intimidate, such a good ability in VGCs. 
you always would like your opponent to not hit as hard as they can. So yeah, he's go uh, Paul's going to Mega Evolve and go for the Fake Out, and then he will Fake Out again. Uh, he will hit it two times due to his uh, ability. Oh, and Paul misses the play rough. Oh, that's painful. Uh, but Asmuro will hit the play rough on Kangaskhan. That play rough is 90 power and 90 accurate. So it's really rare that you miss, but you got to feel for Paul a little bit. Because that uh, would have been pretty big to get some damage off on the opposing Asmuro. Now Paul's kind of like in a, he's in a really tough spot. Um, Salamence can just haul off and Draco Meteor someone, and that's what it's gonna do. And it's gonna target down the Mega Kangaskhan. Most Mega Kangaskhans do not have Protect, so that was a pretty safe bet. That if he's not hitting Kangaskhan, he's gonna hit whatever he switches in really hard, and it's gonna knock out Kangaskhan. And Aaron sets up a Belly Drum here with Asmorel, which is really great because he knew he was gonna knock out Kangaskhan or not be targeted by it. So he gets the Belly Drum and the Citrus Berry. He's sitting at a pretty good amount of health. And Play Rough hits this time on Salamence. So we see a double knockout. But Aaron got a Belly Drum up on his Asmoral. So he is now plus six with, <laughs> geez, with huge power. And he's going to be able to hit really hard. Um, Asmoral has a priority move, Aqua Jet. It can hit with Play Rough, which hits extremely hard. And it's a very bulky Pokemon, so it's very hard to hit with one hit. Um, it's very hard to knock out with one hit. It's very, very hard. But uh, Salamence comes in on Paul's side to get the Intimidate off. Um, Manetric also comes in. When Manetric and Mega evolves, it gets Intimidate as well. So that's what Aaron's going to do right here. And probably, maybe just HP Ice. I would HP Ice right here and try to take out that Salamence. But the other play he could do is Protect. Um, that Asmura on the opposing side is now minus 2. Yeah, So he's going to Protect to be safe here. And Salamence is going to go for Hydro Pump. And you got to think that that's just his best option against uh, Asmoro right now. Uh, he probably has a couple dragon moves. But, oh my god, a critical hit with Play Rough. Now, when you get a crit when you're at minus two, the, the stat change is ignored. So, it's just regular double damage. So, that crit was huge for Paul to get rid of that plus five Asmoro. Wow. Um... Aaron is going to send in Rotom here, and I really think that Paul is still in trouble. He really needs to play this very well to uh, just make this happen right now. Now, um, I, I think that you know Salamence is going to be locked into Hydro Pump, so he's got to go for either Rotom or Manetric here. I think that maybe you hit Manetric and get it out of the way. Uh, if you can hit Manetric and then just get some damage on it. But Paul's going to switch out an Aegis Lash, which I really like because he wants to save his Asmoril. And it's minus two, so it's not going to do a lot here. Rotom protected itself, predicting the Hydro Pump on it. But Paul sees that coming and goes for the Hydro Pump on Manetric and gets a good chunk of damage off. And Aegis Slash takes almost nothing in shield form from that Thunderbolt. Very good play there. I think Paul here, if he can just go for another Hydro Pump on that Mega Manetric, I think that's the play you want to do here. It's sitting at about half health. He could probably knock it off. He goes for Hydro Pump and hits the Rotom Heat form and doesn't knock it out. Oh, no. And Hidden Power Ice comes into play and KOs the Salamence. Maybe, maybe he was thinking that Aaron didn't have Hidden Power Ice uh, because he didn't go for it right away. Uh, and maybe Aaron was just baiting him into not attacking into the Manetric. I don't know. But the overheat knocks out the Aegis Slash. Now Paul is left with only an Azumarill left in play. It's going to be <laughs> near impossible for him to pull this off. I really think that if you're Paul here, you need to take out this Manetric. It's the stronger of the two. It has more special attacks, so the Thunderbolt is going to hit way harder. Plus, that Rotom did go for the Overheat. So, 
it is that minus two special attack. I think you really have to go for an Aqua Jet onto Manetric and hope you do enough damage. Maybe score a crit. But he's going to Aqua Jet on his Rotom thinking that he can tuck a Thunderbolt from Manetric. Um, Asmoral is a burly bulky Pokemon but is weak to thun electric type moves and it knocks him out with a crit. Oh my gosh. Another game changing crit. Onto an Azumarill, that's incredible. I do think Azumarill could have survived that without a crit, despite being weak. It is a very bulky Pokemon. So that was an incredible game um, from two well-established players. I want to thank Aaron again for letting me use this video, and I want to uh, plead with the people uh, holding the uh, evaluating the audition tapes and. Uh, please consider me heavily and then just downright choose me. Um, I have the charisma, <laughs> uh, but for real though, I hope that everyone who's watching this shows your support and can let uh, Pokemon know that I'm the guy you want to see. And, you know, then that would be really great. Then they would know that there are people out there who are like, I like that guy, and I'd like to hear more of him. And if you would like to hear more of you, me, you could check out your cha my channel. But mainly what this is about is I'm auditioning for Pokemon to commentate Nat and Worlds. And I would just be smitten to do so. I would love it. I really, really want to do it. So hope I do. All right, you guys leave a comment, please. And thank you to Pokemon for the opportunity. All right. Have a happy Easter. <laughs>